Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And yeah. this got the segment we were doing. is the college football big game previews for week number 14. Rivalry week, baby. That's right. That's right. We got uh we got some big games to discuss. We do. Game yeah. day is going to Minneapolis. I love the choice. We got the game. I think that's the right game to go. To. I think it is. I think it is. It's it's the one that has the most uh, ranking implications. Yep. The most whatever you want to call it. Well, you um, just went to Ohio State. You've been to Bama, and you haven't been to Auburn yet. But it didn't. It, I just don't know that either of those games. You have the to winner of this Minnesota. game. Min- the winner of this goes to Minnesota. And the winner of this game goes to the Big Ten Championship game. That's what I'm saying. But you have to reward Minnesota. You didn't go to Minnesota when you went for the Penn State game. Yeah. And it, this is a game you got to reward them. They've had a season unlike any other in the history of their school. And I think you got to reward them. Yeah, I think, I, I think so too. I love going to this game. And they get to go in the snow. Yeah, if it snows, can I, no, I'm, That's gonna I'm, be I'm very partial to snow games just for the viewing optics. I, yes. I've been to one my entire life. I never want to go again. What, what game was it? Fat guy. Amazingly enough, Mississippi State Auburn <laughs> years ago. Really? Mississippi State, uh, no, sorry, Mississippi State Arkansas years ago. Lee, who was the defensive coordinator, never wore socks. Little short, squatty guy. Uh, uh, something Lee, Lee something. Coach I know who Jackie you're Cheryl's about. team. Um, Joe Lee Dunn. Joe Lee Dunn. That was it. it. I knew it was the three team, three yeah. three name. Good Mississippi three name guy. Um, <laughs> Joe Lee Dunn. At one point in time, Mississippi State is getting housed. We are standing in what is now about six inches of ice covering our feet in the stadium, and that's uh, my senior year of high school. Holy crap! And uh, I'm wanting to leave. The other two people that I'm with are big state fans, and they are not going anywhere. Was this in Starkville or? It's in Starkville. Okay. In Starkville. And um, at one point in time, while Mississippi State is getting drummed, Joe Lee Dunn goes over to the defensive side of the ball and just starts cussing the players because they are all wrapped up, bundled up, and I think he's wearing like a polo and that is in like some khakis. <laughs> and he is just talking about how saw, saying things that today you would be fired, calling them lady parts. I mean, it was an old school thrashing by Jolie Dunn. And I, I remember that's what it was just, like 20 years ago. I remember laughing so hard because these state fans are making me sit through this, and their team is getting their butt whipped. <laughs> was it was Houston Dale at the at Arkansas? I could not tell you anything else. I'd be willing to bet that's I who was, that was. Yeah, probably. I bet oh, it was oh, Houston yeah, Nutt yeah. against yeah, yeah, Jackie Sherrill. No, I was about to say Houston Nutt was there for a he was there oh, for wow. a while. It was definitely before he got to Ole Miss. So that was our senior year. Yes. What was that? Two thousand one. Two thousand one. Well, the yes, two thousand one. No, 2000 football season. We graduated 2001. That oh, that's something. right. 2000 Arkansas versus Mississippi State. I, I'm going to pull it up and see what Come happened. Come on. Let's see. I was with a friend of mine who was one of my closest friends at the time. Love the guy still. And he was being recruited by Mississippi State. So we got recruit tickets. We were sitting real low down. And that was in Starkville. And let's see. Mississippi State was number 13. Yes. Mississippi at State the time. was was. was was supposed to be really good. They weren't that day. And I think, uh, what did they get beat? Thirty-one to. I don't. I. I. I told you the extent of what I remember of that game. Are you sure it wasn't um, our junior year? It was either. I mean, I know I was still in high school. Th- this one was in Starkville, but it was either a senior or junior year because I wasn't playing. I tore my knee pieces two years before that oh no mississippi state did get beat yeah holy crap that is just remarkable 17 to 10 huh well it wasn't i'll, I'll tell you this it wasn't that close well no it, it, see back then 17 to 10 was kind of a whipping <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't that close <laughs> it's a little different nowadays and old jack but that's fantastic jackie jackie didn't take his hands out of his pockets and joe lee dunn I think was wearing a, a polo and some khakis, and, and it was about thirty degrees outside. And he, oh, and it was just sleet yeah. coming down. It, it was started to snow, and then when it hit the <laughs> hit the stands, it all froze. 
And I just remember standing in ice. That is like nuts. I remember picking my feet out of a slushy. Yeah, it looked like there was, you know, a decent number of people there, but it wasn't full. Oh, no. By any stretch We were in the recruiting area, and there was nobody within 10 or 12 feet of us. That's nuts. That is nuts. All right. Of course, the show is Winning Cures Everything. <laughs> I don't know how we got started that's, on that. I, I don't know, but it was pretty fantastic. Anyway, that's my story. Uh, but, yeah, so, of course, the show, Winning Cures Everything. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. All of our videos, podcasts, picks, previews, Everything else, our social media platforms, our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that uh, that like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and leave us some comments. Tell us what you think about the show. Tell us what you think about this week's matchups. We would love to hear your opinions on it, along with our own, of course. Um, we're going to go through a lot of games this week, and there's a lot that you can bet on. It's Thanksgiving week. If you need to get out of the house for a little bit, you want to go down and get some money on some games, go to Tunica. TunicaTravel.com is the place to go. Tunica, Mississippi is the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. You need to go check them out. They are fantastic. Long weekend. Got to get away from the family exactly. at some point in time. Tunica is a good place to go. This is this time of year and then during Christmas time. I, got, I, I get just enough of family to where it's like, all right, I got to get the hell out of there. This year we're doing Thanksgiving at my mama's house. She lives in Robinsonville right down the road from the casino. So now... I don't even have a drive, man. I can just bebop right out the road. I'm bebop right down the road. I'm going to be there. I like it. I like it a lot. So, let's go ahead and fire into this. Let's see. We're at, We're already six minutes into this thing. <laughs> I, I apologize for the story. Oh, no, don't. It's fantastic. Hope you um, enjoyed that. Yeah, it was It was good stuff. It was good stuff. So, let's, let's jump into game number one. Game day is going to be there. Yes. Minneapolis, Minnesota, TCF Bank Stadium. You got Wisconsin, a two and a half point favorite at Minnesota. Total is forty seven on this. It's a two thirty game on ABC, so it is directly opposite of the Iron Bowl. So if you got two TVs, this would be a good reason to do that, right? I think um, it'll be a two TV situation. Oh, a hundred percent. Okay, if if you are a massive football fan and you don't have two TVs, come on now. Or a laptop, an iPad, you just, with so many Something. streaming options. You, you gotta you gotta have two screens. So it's just your phone's fine. There you go. Watching a snow football game on yes. TV, just there's not a whole lot more that I like. There will not be snow at the Iron Bowl. No, no, it'll be like so. It's going to be seven. No, it's going to be seventy degrees. Holy crap! Yeah. All right, I knew it would be at least mid fifty. Yeah, it's going to be seventy degrees in Auburn, Alabama. So Wisconsin one and four against the spread in their last five, but the offense gained six hundred and three yards against Purdue last week. That is their highest total. In five years, Purdue, uh, not, the high, yeah, not, no, not having the defensive year that that they wanted. No, they are not. <laughs> uh, the The weather it's a high of thirty seven. It's it's a ninety percent chance of rain slash snow. They're expecting more snow than rain. It won't be pretty um, if it's rain slash snow. No, it won't be pretty. It'll be nasty, and it'll be Big Ten football. <laughs> it'll be nasty. So, like we said, game day's first time at Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota goes and gets the win against Northwestern last week. They gave up 22 points to Northwestern. Who's more bundled up on game day? Who is more bundled? Well, they got heaters under that thing. David Pollock. Okay. Okay. David Pollock is 100% more bundled up. I would have said Desmond. No, man. He's he's going to be right up there with the heaters and all that. He doesn't really get out in the crowd. Much. Oh, no, you're right. Because because you're right. Pollock has to do all the hits all the way yeah, away he's, from it. Yeah, he's wandering around. And he's a southern boy. He. He, he, does, he ain't down call. with all that. You're like, right. You're, you're, you got the right pick. Absolutely not. Right pick. And so Pollock, I think, well, I mean, Maria Taylor, she's going to have something stylish on. Oh, she's going to look great. Yeah. Pollock. Pollock's going to look good, too, because he's a handsome man. But I've heard some crazy stories about him. All right. I've heard he's nuts. Dan Dan Wetzel's, uh, the Yahoo fan, Fantasy, not Yahoo, Yahoo Football Podcast. Yeah. That's it. College Football Podcast. That's it. Um, uh, who was it? Pat Forty told. Some kind of it. They 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 took they did the they went with the same shtick we did about the 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 anchorman dueling game day situation. Yeah, how, how nuts is that? By the way, yeah, we both have the same idea. But those guys are the best writers in the business. I don't think they knocked off anybody. I think that's kind of a common thing that maybe a lot of people talked about that we did too. I feel good that we had the idea first. I, I like that ours got out there first, so it didn't look like we were copying them. Yes. I'm almost certain none of those guys follow us and copied us. <laughs> It'd so, be great though. I would, Pat, I, Dan, if you're listening. You're yeah. welcome to come on at any point. Right. Anytime. Um, we'll give you the give you the winning cures bump. Uh but one of the it was it was Pat. Pat talked about how when he was at ESPN, 
He said, Pollock's a maniac. Yeah. Like, Pollock is, and there's a reason he played linebacker. Yes. He did not have the sophistication to play offense. <laughs> he is a maniac. And I was like, oh, man, now I kind of like David a lot more than I did before yeah. before going into that. I'm a, if, if you listen to the ESPN College Football Podcast with him and Kevin Nagandi, like, I need to check that out. He's don't. nuts. Pollock is insane, man. Yeah. Like, he does well, not always, hold back. I always liked him at Georgia. He was the one Georgia guy I kind of liked. I never really liked Georgia, but I always liked him. When he got hurt his senior year, I was I was like, man, because I – he reminded me of Vrabel, and I kind of thought that guy's going to look like a Patriot. He looks like a Patriot. Yeah. Can yeah. he just take over and be linebacker? He broke his neck. Uh, all right, he, yeah. won't be, he won't be Vrabel. Anyway. No, but he, he – I mean, he put on a bunch of weight, and then he wanted to get rid of it, and – in doing so, I think he went a little crazier than he already was. I mean, that dude walks around eating kale chips and stuff. It's like, dang man, you know, like he's he's crazy. Uh, Herb Street said he's uh, he's vegetarian or vegan, one Maybe. or the other. You'll drop a, you'll drop a bunch of lbs doing that. You got that right. All right, so Wisconsin Minnesota. Back to the ball game. Great. Wisconsin is a two and a half point favorite. The winner of this game does go to the Big Ten title game to face Ohio State. That matchup, that side of it anyway, the East. Has already been decided. But this one, Wisconsin had two losses back several weeks ago. They have worked their way back up. Minnesota got the one loss that Wisconsin needed them to get. And Wisconsin, remember, Wisconsin's playing with revenge here. Yes. Minnesota went into their house and beat the brakes off of them last year, 37 to 15. I understand that Wisconsin is only one and four against the spread in their last five, but they have won all those games. Yep. And that, I take that back. They lost to it. They lost the the Illinois game and the Ohio State game. The other ones, they won them. Like, they beat Purdue by 22, I think, 21, whatever it was. I think they were favored by 24. Like, I'm not going to hold that against you. You're only favored by two and a half here. Basically, better we're team to wins win and covers. We're trying, to, we're trying to win a game right here. I, under a field goal, you're picking a winner. I, as far as picks go, I'm picking Wisconsin here. Whew. There is not, There's a rivalry here. I know. No, and, this is the reason this is rivalry week. Yeah, and and they would love nothing more than to knock off Minnesota. than to knock off Minnesota in their historically good year. Yep. So I I I mean Wisconsin's just the better team. They are the better team. They like are statistically the better team. I, on paper, on it, just looking at them, everything. So all year I was riding high on Wisconsin. There was a day and a time where I had Wisconsin number one in the country. Oh yeah, they had the resume to be justified as number one. Well, in the country, look at by this: the way. if they don't lose to Illinois, if they don't have oh, the three they, turnovers, they've got the one loss. It's to Ohio State. Then they they're got still a in shot. the playoffs. They got a like shot the, at Ohio State redemption, which absolutely gets them in the playoffs. Yeah, that's a it's there. It's still a a contender. A hundred percent right. How they lost that game, still don't know. We were in Chicago when that happened. Kind of weird. Turnovers. Um. So, as high as I was on Wisconsin all year, I, I kind of started falling for this Minnesota team. I can understand it. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna take the two and a half points, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna take uh, Minnesota to win. Okay. Okay. Minnesota that, that goes up. against everything I believe because you know how much I love Wisconsin. I, yes. I watched a game. I don't remember what week it was, but me, you, and the Northwestern guys were on our group text. Man, I'm, I got a lot of stories tonight. <laughs> and uh, get a little coffee in me pretty late night. I, I get a little crazy. Um, and I watched a tackle, their right tackle, pull. And it's like a pitch play. He is running step for step with Jonathan Taylor in the wide open field. And Taylor's not catching him. And then he has some linebacker or really big safety. It was either a small linebacker or a big safety that he squares up. And that guy is all four extremities off the ground. In, in the air <laughs> and flying backwards, and then he just stops and does a big flex, and that's when Taylor blows by him. Yeah. And I think, I mean, he went a good seven or eight yards, and Taylor didn't catch him. You're not supposed to be that big, that strong, and that fast. That That's just not how the human body is supposed to work. Don't know who that guy is. That guy will be playing on Sundays. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, their entire line might be playing on Sundays. I, yes. I, I love this Wisconsin team. It's hard for me to pick against them. I think here I'm going to. That makes sense. I, mean, I, I really like what P.J. Fleck has done. It's I, a fun story. I, I, yes. I like find, you're pulling for the fun story. I find this Minnesota team very endearing, and that's why I'm picking. They're at home. I'm catching points. That's 
the list of the reasons why I'm doing it. I'm going with the better football team. You, you and I'm not going to be upset <laughs> if that happens. I'm not wagering on this game at all. Making a pick in a game in a big game spot. Yeah, I can understand it. You ready for next uh, next matchup? Yeah, come on, let's do it. All right, we won't be as long on on all of these. Ohio State is a nine point favorite at Michigan right now. Total is fifty and a half. It's eleven a.m. on Fox. It Fox is basically every big Ohio State game has been eleven a.m. this year. Well, every it's big game they have has been eleven. They, oh yeah, they they have found a. If you listen to the wins and losses podcast by Clay Travis, he's had the uh, the guy that's kind of in charge of um, Fox. What is it, Mike Moldeville? I or? forgot his yeah. name, and I should have I should have looked yeah. it up because I knew I was going to talk about this. They specifically sought out, we're going to put our best game on noon because the bump coming straight in off of game day has always been that first set of games terrible, but everyone watches them. And then you get into 230 games and you're competing with all the other conferences. Yeah, best SEC. Games. We're just going to, we're just going to take the bump. Everybody's watching game day. They, so they everybody will be pick, watching it. And they're going to immediately move over to this game and they get a massive number and they're pulling Bigger numbers than everybody but the SEC game. It's really Last smart. Week, it's really smart. Ohio State, Penn State did nine point, what was it, nine point six three million yeah, viewers. Yeah. Uh it, it, the highest rated game outside of Alabama LSU. Yes, this year. Sir. I, I was about to say that's the only game that's and, and they've had multiple in this yeah, game, this game is like gonna that. beat that game, by the way. Yeah. I think by a lot. Oh yeah, I think so. I think so. I think this game will be uh massive. Yeah. Because, I mean, it is every year. I mean, every single year. Here, I've got the... But, uh, but now it's got that time slot that they've just seen to, to look at the analytics and say we're here and we're doing this. Let's see. All right, it was 9.43 million last week. Uh, the 11 a.m. Fox game. Let's see. Michigan State. Michigan was 3.94 million. The, and, that's a, and listen, that's Michigan State not being... Hey, Penn State, Minnesota did 6.74 oh, no. million. Well, I knew that. That was an incredible football game. I watched every second of that. Let's see. We had Nebraska, Purdue did 2.7 million. Yeah, like, that, and, and nobody should have watched that's, that game. That's two teams that aren't going to bowl games, mate. Well, I guess Purdue and Nebraska got bowl eligible. Here we go. Wisconsin and Ohio State did 6.65 million. Yeah. So, and that was the same day as Auburn LSU. Auburn LSU had 7.18. So and had had you had them both at two thirty, neither oh, one of those not, is getting. Yeah, that neither one of them are getting what they get. So you're right. Let's see, and then uh, let's go back one more. Let's see, Fox, West Virginia, Oklahoma. Yeah, West Virginia, Oklahoma, like which wasn't even a game. No, did two point five four million. Yep. So and it it was number like seven on the day, number eight on the day. But still, two point five four million. No, this has been this has been a great win for Fox. A great yeah. win for Fox. Looking at analytics and not trying to say everything's got to be prime time now. Being an SEC guy, I'm really glad that nobody in the SEC has done that. Yeah, because we like these two thirty games. I like the later games. Most people yeah. do, but I would love to get away from eleven a.m. games. And I, I think it it works better up there anyway. Eleven a.m. games down here, especially early in the year, are hot. Oh and yeah, disgusting. no, no, it's, a, it's a, yeah. You go yeah. to, I mean, you and I live close to Oxford. That field at 11 a.m., oh, yeah, it's 120, 130 degrees in September. Yeah, it's bad. I, you kill a man. You got that right. But up there, I mean, you're talking 75 degrees in September. Oh, yeah. Like, great. it's all right. So, uh, so Ohio State, 50 and a half is the total on this. It's at the big house in Ann Arbor. Uh, Michigan has been playing lights out football right now. Um, the total has come from 53 down to 51 because the weather yep. looks like it's going to be disgusting. High of 37 here as well. Wintry mix for the entire game. And it's a, a 60 to 70% chance of that. Now, obviously, things can change. We're recording this on Tuesday night. Look, Justin Fields, the wrist issue thing is is legit. Yep. They've already wrapped up the, the Big Ten East. Yep. I don't think that this game doesn't mean as much for them because, like, obviously, Michigan isn't playing for anything more than pride. But... At what point? I mean, if you're if you're looking for a Big Ten title and a national championship, how much danger do you put Justin Fields in? I don't know the answer to that. 
I mean, I don't think he not he doesn't play. I think he. I mean, I he'll he play. play. He's going to play every snap I just, unless I, he gets hurt. I wonder if he. I wonder if they run him a lot because they did last week. And so in in another situation injury, like this, let's take an opportunity for him to get hit more. No, I'm saying that they don't run him a lot. Like okay, they, all right. I, because I, they, I, I, they, I thought they you were saying run him because his wrist hurt. Maybe he won't throw it so accurate. But I was thinking running him sounds like a terrible idea. Well, that's so. So that's what makes Justin Fields great, yeah, right? Is is I his agree. ability to get out of the pocket and make plays. I agree. And they ran him a ton against Penn State last week. Correct. And that's you know at this point in the season you're playing for a national championship. That's something that you got to do. Yeah, you got to do whatever you got to win. You got to let him loose, let him go. It, it, Georgia didn't let him do this, so you you got to you got to let him go out and make plays because that's what he does. But in a situation like this, I mean, if you sit him back in the pocket, is he good enough to beat? Michigan, especially when it's rainy and sleeting and 37 degrees outside and you're playing a defense that is playing lights. This is the best right defense now. they've played all year. And it's yeah. not close, by the way. Yeah, I agree. It, it's not going to be close compared to the other teams that they've played so far defensively. So here's, here's what I think. I think the rain, the wintry mix. We, we watched Michigan beat the hell out of Notre Dame in a monsoon. Yeah. Michigan is not afraid of an ugly, muddy – mess they want this 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 lines up for them so well and Ohio State's offense is so much about speed and precision and timing and just we're going to be better athletes than you but but when that rain is coming down and it gets cold and Fields is a southern guy he he is not from he's not Mr. Ohio okay now Shea Patterson didn't either but he's shown that he can play in the in the in the cold and in the rain I th- people have really looked past Michigan this year. Completely, you know? but the 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 Army game and the Minnesota game, or the Army game and the Wisconsin game, yeah. is, is all anybody anybody talks about. I mean, we we covered it in our live stream of of doing the the top the playoff re- uh, reaction, uh, the reaction show, yeah. And and people still brought up, well, what about Army game? Like, dude, that was week two, man. I, I don't know what to tell you. They that, listen, that was so long ago. Listen to this. Opponent yards per play, 3.53 is number one. That's yeah. Ohio State. Michigan is number three. They're only giving up 4.08 yards per play. And that's after they got demolished by Wisconsin earlier. I was just about to say, think about how Wisconsin inflates that number. And then Penn State had had some big plays against yep. them. Like, it's I, this is going to be a really difficult game for Ohio State. I like completely I, the, agree. The percentages, yeah. um, let's see. MyTeamsBetter.com gives Ohio State a 64.58% chance to win the game. Now, I I don't think that that's totally accurate. 64% is not great, though. No, no, it's not. But You're talking about a team that everyone has number one in the country. They, they should be 75-plus to win their games, right? Eh, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I mean, if you look at some of these other ones, like... LSU is only 59% to beat Texas A&M. Clemson is 72% to beat South Carolina. Georgia, 82% beat Georgia Tech. I don't understand how they um, get any of these numbers. Man. Here's here's how their system is set up on this site. And this is just one site, right? But it's stats one percentage plus FBS average rank percentage plus their winning percentage times their opponent's winning percentage. Like, it's just a, a formula that they threw together that has actually been pretty successful. Okay. So... You know, they, they give Ohio State a 64% chance. It it ain't as good a chance as Clemson going to South Carolina. Well, obviously not. Or Georgia against Georgia Tech. Yeah. Right? I mean, those are two bad teams. Now, I, I do wonder. I bet the ESPN FPI is different. Like, I'm sure it's probably yep. 75% for Ohio State. I'd agree with that. Um, and I'll actually pull that up. So, we'll uh, we'll see here. But, um, but yeah, I, I'm curious... If for no other reason than you and I both really think Michigan has a really, really good shot. Like, this I'm, is a I'm coin gonna, flip I'm, game to I'm me. absolutely going to take nine points. That's not questionable. And I'm going to take Michigan to win the game outright. Let's see. Yeah, so FPI gives Ohio State a 73.9% chance to win this game. I don't think that's accurate. I don't either. Uh, especially with the weather. God, eighty percent? Are you kidding me? They might win the game. That doesn't mean they 
they're, they're, I just don't think that you should s- just assume that it's an 80% chance they're going to. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I, I totally agree with you. So, I, um, I will say this. I think that Ohio State finds a way to get it done because until I see Michigan beat Ohio State, uh, I'm going to go with Ohio State. But I don't think that they cover. I think this is a super close game. Yep. Uh, I will take Ohio State to win. I'll take Michigan in the points there. Um, you uh, you calling the upset here? Yeah, yeah. I think you've got a team that's desperate against a team that's that's riding really high. This is Ryan Day has looked incredible. Ryan Day looks like he has not made a mistake all year. I just don't think this team's been hit in the mouth yet. And that Wisconsin team that they played is not close. I know Wisconsin beat Michigan. That's why you can't use circular reasoning. That Wisconsin team that they played and close to this Michigan team. That Penn State team also beat Michigan. Not close to this Michigan team right now. Yeah. That, just not close. Yeah, I think you're right. All right, let's move on to the next one. Alabama, a three-and-a-half-point favorite at Auburn. Total is 50 in this game. Kind of a low total. Yep. Uh, 2.30 p.m. on CBS is at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Weather is supposed to be 70 degrees and cloudy. There will, there will be rain in Auburn, but it ain't coming until later that night. So conditions will be fine for the ball game. It, Alabama being the favorite, you have to expect that, right? Like I, I, I was, I was shocked. You were shocked that they were the favorite. Yeah. Now the look ahead line when they still had Tua. That's a di- was Alabama minus nine and a half. That makes sense. Now, I don't know. It was Alabama. I think minus seven and a half. It was yeah. That it was Alabama minus sense. seven and a half. If it was nine and a half, I would have taken Auburn all day long. Well, yeah. Um, what the hell is going on? I don't know what that is. My wife is trying to find my phone. <laughs> oh man, the stuff that happens during the show, I swear. I swear. Uh so they were seven and a half point favorites, and then the line came out and they opened as two and a half point favorites. And it was bet up to four. And now it's sitting at three and a half. I don't think that I agree with it. Because it, it what you're saying there is that losing Tua is only a five point difference. Yep. And if if the line is four, you're saying that Alabama is a seven point favorite over Auburn without Tua on a neutral field. I think Tua, I think Tua, this is a seven point game. That's where I would have set the line. Yeah, and I think that's where it's a good fair line. Okay, but without Tua, without Tua, I think this is a pick'em game at worst. Yeah, and a one or two point game for Auburn. So here's the thing: Auburn went into Death Valley. Yeah, on the road, gave LSU all they wanted. Well, no. LSU, I know you can't always do circular reason, but LSU went into Alabama on a game day situation, 150,000 people, crazy, and kind of whipped up on Alabama until late in the second half. And so you take those teams, Auburn's played or played one, going to play the other one, but they get them at home you take the best player on the team out of that game. I just think it's really hard to say. <laughs> Look, LSU dominated Auburn. They, the LSU gave up some really uh, inopportune turnovers. That's they right. were very opportune for Auburn. But I think Auburn's um, defense is like that, though. Auburn's the best defense in the SEC. Yes, they They're definitely are. They're the best are. defense that LSU played all year. This is going to be the best defense LSU, all Alabama's going to play all year. LSU this still, quarterback is going to be tested. LSU's post-game win expectancy against Auburn was still 95%. Yeah. I they mean, were up 23-13, to 13 and they gave up a garbage-time touchdown. And we did the same thing up. to Alabama to make it look close. Yeah. Um, and so what I'm saying is you look at that, and, and it, wasn't, it wasn't a 23-20 to 20 game. Like, no. that was the final score. That's right. But I, I, LSU I dominated that game. I, I mean, they had 508 man. yards against Auburn. They yeah. had 5.77 so I, yards I per play. I watched the game a little differently than looking at scores. I always do. Yeah, and, and and what I saw in that game is their front seven, just give us complete hell. Oh yeah, absolutely, that, and that's it. And and you've got an inexperienced coach quarterback back there. This is not the best offensive line Alabama's ever had. Going up against one of the best defenses you're going to ever go up against. I, I just think this is an opportunity for more to to make mistakes. Now I will say this: Auburn's problem all season scoring has been scoring. Like if you go, your through, defense ain't great. Okay. The, the no. reason they were able to score against LSU but, some but is because as far our as, defense ain't great. As far as efficiency goes, Alabama is a top 10 defense as far as efficiency. Now, 
they're not great at at stuff rate. They're not great at stopping the run, and that's what Auburn does best, right? But Bo Nix makes mistakes. He makes a lot of mistakes. So I, I wonder if Gus is going to let him make mistakes. I I think you know how Gus gets. If he can run the football ninety percent of the game, he's going to run it every snap. Oh yeah. And and here's here's where the issue is for me, and why I think that Auburn will ultimately win the football game is Raquan Davis and DJ Dale, starting defensive linemen for Alabama, are still day to day right now. I was now. just about to say, I don't know how healthy you guys are. I, well, we're not. Well, Alabama's yeah. not at all. And and you're not elite anyway on defense like you right. usually are. So it's not like you're losing two of the best defensive players in the game. If these guys are starting already and and they're they're really good, by the way. I don't I don't know who I trust behind them, and then that's just a little bit extra depth against a team that's going to push the depth of the defensive front. Yes, because of the way they run. And and the worst thing about Auburn is Auburn doesn't just line up and run between the guards and run between the tackles. We talk about this; they run it as far outside as they can run it over and well, over and over again. So that's a note that I put in here. So this is what I'm scared of here right um and so first we'll start with the fact that auburn uh they're scoring like in conference you know they scored 51 on arkansas no big deal (laughs) like we get that they scored 56 on mississippi state that makes sense because everybody's doing that that's it yeah um they scored 28 against texas a&m back in early four oh that was yeah week four back in september but aside from those they scored 13 on florida they scored 20 on LSU, and that was with a late touchdown. You're, yeah, you're right. They scored 20 against Ole Miss, who is garbage on defense. They yeah, scored 14 against Georgia. Weird. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they have not been able to score. They scored 24 on Tulane. You know, like at right, right. Memphis put up 50 on Tulane. Like Memphis it, is a far superior offensive team than them, though. Agreed. But here's what I'm terrified of. Alabama's problem on defense this year has been – Blown assignments, yeah. right? Like that's the that's the biggest oh, thing. If you go in, if you don't protect the the the, oh my god, my, not the line of scrimmage, the uh, the edge. If, yeah. If you don't protect the edge, those guys are fast when they hand the ball off and they run those sweeps. Anthony Schwartz, they're taking. Oh, Schwartz is taking and, to the house. And Eli Stove, they have eighteen carries for one hundred seventy five yards and three touchdowns. Is Schwartz the fastest player in college football? I believe that's right. I mean, yeah. that guy, that guy is. Like yeah. speed demon just doesn't explain it. They they position Auburn to take advantage of assignment breakdowns by Alabama's defense. Remember, Alabama's defense is still super, super young. young. Those right. linebackers and whatnot. I mean, it's Alabama's, so funny how LSU and Bama are at, at just uh, prototypes of one another. Yeah, right just now. mirror images. This year, I've never seen two teams look so similar. Yeah, it's it's pretty insane. It's pretty insane. Um, but to be fair. Auburn's issue is not the defensive line. Their issue is their linebackers and their safe, uh, their uh, yeah. uh, secondary. They're inexperienced on the back half of their defense. Well, but they, see, that's the thing. They, they're they experienced, but they're just not very good. Okay. So Because they, yeah, they've yeah, got a lot right. of upperclassmen. They've got guys that have been there, but they haven't gotten any better. And as, so long as you can get the ball to the wide receivers. And, now, Najee Harris has been playing out of his mind, but... It, where are you going to – like, you're going to have to get him the ball in space. You're going to have to do a lot of a lot of screens, a what, lot of post What he did of, against LSU, he's not doing against uh, Auburn. Agreed. Agreed. He's, he's just not. That stuff's so, not going to be there against them. And that's the issue, is it, that won't be there, but the wide receivers will be able to get out in space. You just got to make sure that Mac Jones can get him the ball. I, I think I – It's going to have gonna, to be a lot of quick passes. I think it's going to be hard. Oh, I, I agree. I think, I think he's going to struggle in this game. So so my guess is, like, I, obviously, I'm going to pick Alabama because I got you. I have yeah, to. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, but my brain is telling me yeah. it's going to be a really difficult game I, for I'm, Alabama. I'm, I'm, I think Auburn wins the game outright. And I've been saying that ever since Tua went down. Hey, you've been saying I, that since before Tua went down. <laughs> well, I thought Auburn had a shot to beat him. I didn't think it was a foregone conclusion that Auburn would lose with Tua. Yeah. That Alabama would just moonwalk in and beat them with Tua, I didn't. I didn't think that when Tua goes out, I don't think Bama can win this game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think you're right. Um, I don't know. I, I'm taking Alabama because it, the way, like, the way that they can win 
is you put pressure on Bo Nix yep. and you make him make mistakes. I just don't and know that Gus is going to trust Bo in this game. Because you know how Gus gets in these big Alabama games, he gets pretty conservative. Yeah. And he's I he's not – Bo, I don't think, has earned the right to be trusted. And if he does trust him, it's going to be in one of those spots where we need a play. Yeah. Now I'm going to see, can he make one play? Yeah. I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. It's going to be a really interesting the, game. The biggest thing that you don't have to be afraid of that you normally do have to with Alabama is if he does take a couple of shots and he misses, y'all don't have the elite defensive backs to make him pay for it the way you have in the past. Your guys are are, are still pretty young and inexperienced in the DB situation, too. It, this is true. However, Alabama does lead the country in takeaways. Number 17. That's fine. So, not number 17, sorry, number one, but it's 17 takeaways yeah, this year. That's that's um, fine. I, I'm, so, it's I'm, it, it can cost Auburn if, if they're... I want to know how many of those were on Kent State. Oh, it did I don't know. There, there was a bunch last week. Um, you know but, what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like at at some point in time, yeah, you took them away from Ole Miss and Auburn and, and Arkansas. You didn't yeah. have a lot of takeaways in that A and M game. You had some, but not a lot. No, not a lot. But you, you didn't have any in the LSU game. Like, so I, I just I, no. There was there was there one takeaway in the LSU. There was one the very first play of the second half. Yeah. So they took it away from uh, from Burrow. Yeah. So, but that's that's the thing. You get him to make a couple of mistakes, gives Alabama a shot. If Gus puts us, if Gus puts it in the hands of of of, uh, of Bo, then then this loss will be on Gus. Yeah, that's just there's no other way around it. Uh, run the ball ninety percent of the time. Stop the run, and you should be able to win. This is this is going to be. They want to win. They got to play old school SEC football because that's the way their team is built. Run yeah, the ball stop, and the that's run. also the way that you can beat Alabama. Like now. Obviously, LSU did it a different way, uh, but LSU was able to do it with, you know, Alabama mistakes and turnovers. You got, you got to, well, yeah. If you're going to beat them in a track meet, you got to be able to run the track meet. Yep, you got that right. Albert can't run. Albert can't run the track meet. No, they Georgia cannot. can't run the track meet. If y'all play Georgia this year, if Georgia doesn't play you old school SEC football, Georgia can't beat you. You are correct. All right, let's move on. Let's uh, let's try and run these a little quicker. Uh, we got two more big matchups. These are both on Friday. And then we've got our interesting matchups that we'll uh, we'll do rapid fire style. Cincinnati at Memphis on Friday, two thirty p.m. on ABC. The total is fifty-seven. Seems kind of low for a, a Memphis game. Memphis favored by eleven. It's at the Liberty Bowl. No rain until after the game. The high is going to be fifty-eight. Cincinnati one and four against the spread in their last five. Memphis has been rolling, folks, ever since that SMU win. Game day came to town, gave Memphis a little boost, and they have been running teams. Cincy, however, Cincy is undefeated in the AAC and are still an 11-point underdog here because they have not been able to dominate anybody. Like, they, they destroyed UConn, and that is their one cover in the last five games. They win by three against South Florida after trailing the entire game. Now, they found a way to win, but they trailed the entire game. That's right. And that's the same South Florida team that Memphis went the next week and beat them 49 to 10. Like it now obviously you can't look at matchups like that, but just for comparison's sake. I don't know what has happened to Cincinnati. They're I, just trying to win and survive survive in advance. Survive in advance, yes. That's all they're doing. But man, I if they continue to survive in advance, they will be the New Year's six rep. group of five yeah. team. I mean, this is number seventeen against number eighteen. And they don't then, need style points for that. Yeah. Nobody will have the resume they'll have. Agreed. They'll have one loss to Ohio State, who right now is currently number one in the country. Yeah. What uh, what do you think about this? I'm terrified of Memphis being an 11 point favorite. Now Memphis is the desperate team. Memphis has to have this game. Cincinnati is playing for Group of Five New Year's Day Bowl. Yeah, but that's all they're playing for because they lose this game and they're still in. They the come conference. right back next week to play Memphis a second time in Memphis for the championship game. So. Memphis has to have this game, and Cincinnati doesn't. And I wonder how much that's going to play into one team is desperate and the other team. This game matters. See, I'm trying to say this game doesn't really matter. That New Year's Six bowl game, I think the American does the money differently, and it's not split 
evenly. I think the teams that go to the bowl games get the larger percentage. Yeah, they do. That New Year's Six bowl money will change Cincinnati's financial situation for years to come. Yeah. And and so I think they are fighting for that. Because it's I, not, I it's do not agree. SEC. We just split it evenly 14 ways. Thanks, uh, uh, Missouri, for not counting this year. We'll split, it thir- <laughs> we'll split it 13 ways, and we'll get a bigger piece of that pie. Um, <laughs> I like when that happens. Old Miss, the last couple of years, help us all make a little more change. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I think this – I'm scared of this game as a Memphis guy. Now, I'm going, and I'm excited about it. I, I'm actively afraid of this game, though. I will tell you this. We did see this last year. Like, the same exact scenario, UAB goes to Middle Tennessee State at the end of the year. Not the same scenario. I understand, because it, because this, you have the New Year's Six stuff put in. But... How much money is that New Year's Six Bowl matter far more than a regular bowl? Do you uh, know the it, difference it, in money? It pays, I think it's like $8 million for I mean, it's a, it's the conference, a, but it's... Yes. I think I think since he would get like sixty or seventy percent of that. Yes, I mean it's not a l- insignificant amount of no, money. No, it's, it's a lot for uh, for programs that only get seven million a from G, the TV. A G five that doesn't have the TV deals that the other schools have. Yeah, it's it's a big deal. It's a big deal, and UAB didn't have that. I wonder how much the players worry about that though. Well, the players want to win every game. Yeah. So that, that's why I'm look at the players. So how much do the coaches care about that? Coaches care a lot because they're the ones that get paid that money. Yeah, that's true. That's how they make that money. I I will say this: uh, the situation with UAB in Middle Tennessee. UAB goes to Middle Tennessee, loses twenty-seven to three, gets look like they dominated. weren't even trying. Yeah, went back the next week and beat the hell out of them. So yeah, they they beat them the next week for the the conference title uh, because that's what mattered. Yeah. I, I, I'll tell you, I think it's good for the conference as a whole, even though it might cost them a New Year's Six Bowl. It's, I think a Memphis-Cincinnati rematch is better for your championship game than a Cincinnati-Navy game. Yes. And I, I, I know this is me crapping on, the, on, the, on the, the academies again. I'm not trying to, but while I appreciate what they do, when they play one another, I think it's awesome. When they play other teams, it's it's sometimes tough to watch. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I will take Memphis here. I'll take Memphis to win. I'll take Cincy to cover. I rarely do that. I like picking the winner and the cover at the same time. I'm going. I'm going to take Memphis to cover both. Yeah. Like to win and eleven and, just is a lot of points. It's a lot, but it also makes me think. Okay, a lot of people should be thinking that Cincy would cover this, mm-hmm. and. I wonder where the money and is not. right now. Hang on, let me just look at it. So well, that sounds good to me. So oh, Memphis straight up, Cincy plus oh, eleven for you. That's surprising. In Vegas, seventy three percent of the people are on Memphis. That's shocking. It, it's definitely strange. Seventy three percent. I mean, that's it, people love this Memphis team, man. And yeah. and Cincy has well, not why, looked good. Why not? Nationwide, teams that cover a whole lot. Towards the end of the year, get pounded because yeah, because they're, they cover they're covering machines. All right, let's move on. Next one, the another Friday game, eleven a.m. This one is on ABC. It's at Scott Stadium in Charlottesville, Virginia. Virginia Tech at Virginia. Virginia Tech is a three point favorite right now. Total is forty seven and a half. It's going to be fifty six and sunny. So it, it's going to be beautiful weather out there. Virginia has not beaten Virginia Tech since 2003. Virginia, 1-2 and two straight up and against the spread as a dog this year. A little surprising they were only a dog three times. Yeah. Uh, Virginia Tech has won and covered six of seven since that September 27th demolition to Duke at home. They swapped out quarterbacks. I mean, it, Herndon has, or is it Herndon or Hendon? Herndon. I think it's Herndon. Yeah, I don't know how to um, pronounce that guy. I'm, I'm, I'm bad at the pronunciation. He has been incredible, but the biggest change has been their defense. Bud Foster finally got that defense to to yep. start doing what they're supposed to do. And they are playing lights out right now. Virginia Tech got into the ratings, or into the rankings. They're number 24 in the playoff rankings this week. Deservedly so, I think. This line opened as a pick em. Yep. The analytics say that Virginia should be about a three-point favorite. Yep. Even on a neutral field, but Virginia Tech has been playing so much better the last like six, seven weeks. You know the the only the only loss that they've had in their last seven games was the one point loss at Notre Dame. 
The only cover well, they dominated and controlled that game. Yep. The only cover that they didn't have was against Rhode Island, yeah. and it was just I was about to say whatever. What was the, I don't know what the spread was. That, the spread but. was like twenty four. I think they won by fourteen. They they were just they were trying stuff out. That's right. And this is Bud Foster's last game. Last last regular, regular season, season game. game. I guess yeah, because they win this, they'll get in the ACC championship game, and then they'll get a bowl game. Uh, my this is last shot at Virginia though. And that guy's made a living making Virginia's life hell. Yeah. My my brain tells me that I need to go with Virginia here. The public is the, the biggest public play is going to be Virginia Tech. So and if you want to go with the house, if you want to be on Vegas' side, which we kind of usually always like to be, you go with Virginia. Bronco Minnehaw is still a good coach. No, he definitely is. That's the one thing that scares me is Bronco. Anybody else on that sideline? But I, it, I'm easily taking Virginia Tech. It, Virginia Tech has looked so much better. I know. Like I, I you I'm, know, I'm I, on Fuente. I'm, you know I'm that. yeah, I'm on Virginia Tech. I'm, I'm on Fuente. I'm not getting off. I got off for a little bit at the beginning of the season. I, I want him to do well there. I think I think this is Bud Foster. Once again, he's he's made a career out of just making Virginia look bad. Yeah. And never losing this game. Yeah, and I think I think he does the same thing. And I here. don't think he wants to go out a loser to Virginia. No. I think that defense is gonna have something for him. They're gonna struggle to score. Virginia Tech's just gotta don't turn the ball over. Don't make mistakes and they win this game. Yeah. You're you're hundred percent right. Hundred percent right. All right, let's do our rapid fire very quickly. Roll. Uh Thursday night, Thanksgiving night, Ole Miss at Mississippi State, the egg bowl. State is a two and a half point favorite here. I like Ole Miss in this spot. Now, this obviously, line, we don't make picks on these. This but line is drunk as hell. It's a, yeah, it opened as a pick'em, right? It, hang on, this guy, I, I was texting you and and some Ole Miss and Mississippi State friends, and this line opens as a pick, immediately goes Ole Miss minus one, and then Mississippi State minus two and a half. Then the Mississippi State to three. Where is it settled? It's now? back to two and a half. Now. Back to two and a half. That all happened in less than eight hours. Yeah. I've never seen a line move like that. And I mean, I've seen it happen across a week. I've never seen, I'm talking, this thing came out Sunday, Sunday afternoon at one by, and then jumps all over like seven 30. I'm texting you guys saying every time I check the lines, the old miss line is different. Yeah. And I'm with you. I like the rebel at I, Mississippi state at home. They need this for a sixth win. But I got a little insight into the fans on this game. <laughs> what neither one of them wants to win, right? Yeah. So so I had <laughs> I had for for my birthday, well, a little another another year older, a little wiser. I, I had nothing but Ole Miss and Mississippi State guys hanging out at the house watching football. And both of them, instead of talking trash and wanting to win this game, both of them were gladly saying, Y'all keep the egg bowl this year. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're gonna let you guys have it. Because both of them want a different coach. But they absolutely understand that if whoever wins this game not, is not being replaced, they will absolutely yeah. they've they've done enough at those programs to save their job. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, yeah, <laughs> that was that was kind of entertaining. I mean, it's I, I think it's going to be an entertaining game. Uh, well, I it'll think, be a shit show. Oh yeah, but uh, it'll be fun to watch. N- neither team has a defense. Having no dog in that fight, it will absolutely be fun to watch. What uh, what's the total on it? Do you know? Because yeah, whatever it is, I would probably go over. I'm thinking it's like 57, 58, maybe. You'd go over? Oh, it's, um, Ole Miss isn't going to work. Cause they just... Let's see. Total 58? is 58. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. I'd go over. Neither team can stop anybody. Yeah, well, yeah I would too. So, yeah, it, I, I, I think also. I think Ole Miss scores over 30. I think Mississippi State scores over 30. Like, I, I just I don't see either defense being able to stop the other one. So And it's going to be a bunch of running, so there may not be. This game's going to be a disaster. Yeah, it is. Uh and it's on Thanksgiving night. It's the only college football game that night, so I'm I'm game for it. Uh, now let's let's move on. Let's right, talk about quick. Friday games. Washington State at Washington. It's a six and a half point line, I believe. It may be at seven now. It is seven. It is seven. Okay, it so Washington seven. minus seven. They have destroyed Washington State every year that Peterson has been there. Uh, I, both of them are six and five. This is not the Washington teams that have been here the last couple of years. Agreed. But it's also not the Washington State teams either. Oh, yeah. This is per typical Washington State. It's, uh, Washington State's been better than this the last three, four years. I don't know. Last year, they were better than this. Yeah, the year before, they had 10 wins. The year yeah. before that, they had 
eight or nine wins. Eight or nine wins, but that's not they're not but, they're not great. They're no. good. They're not great. So uh, what I'm saying is, no, this isn't the same Washington teams, but they are at home, a chance to salvage the season. Give Mike Leach a touchdown, you're a fool. That's hey, I would take Washington all day here. Yeah, all, right. all if day. If you want to do that, you call me. Uh, Iowa at Nebraska is also on Friday. Uh, I am all over Iowa in this game. <laughs> What's the number? Five and a half. Yeah, it's more than a touchdown. Now, it's at world. Nebraska. Nebraska needs this one for bowl eligibility. You think that matters? No. I don't either. I don't think Nebraska's very good. Their defense is terrible. And I understand that Iowa's offense isn't great by any stretch, but you're talking five and a half points. I, I'm never just like, there's a few teams that I enjoy watching fail. And Nebraska and, and has turned into one of those? That, yeah, they, they're not, they haven't like historically always been that. But for some reason, when they had national hype, for championship rank. I was just like, what what are, what are people talking about for them to not make a bowl game? They have the second best odds in the Big 10 to, to win the win national championship. The national championship. Yeah. I would really like to see them not get bowl eligible. That would be funny. That'd I mean, I, I just funny. I just think this needs to show people you take your preseason rankings and you can roll them up real tight and shove them up your ass. Texas A&M goes to LSU on Saturday night. We're going to beat the shit out of them. LSU minus 17. Now, I'll tell you this. I was thinking really hard about taking Texas A&M here because I thought Jimbo has really got this thing turned around like they're looking all right. And then I saw the press conferences this week, and I saw Joe Burrow talking to the press and saying how excited, like they are really looking forward to this weekend. Jimbo's nephew sucker punched that dude last year. Yeah. They are are coming with the stank. Yeah. They're going to beat the hell out of this team. Uh, Joe, Joe Burrow started smiling at him, and they said, you know, what are you looking forward to? And they were like, it's another game day. It's another game day. Another and he, game he started day. grinning. He no. looked like uh, looked like Macaulay Culkin in yeah. Home Alone, man. He, do, he does kind of look like that. Oh, my God. I was yeah. I, So I, I saw that, and I was like, they are never going to. They're going to no. score 70 no. in regulation. He's not coming out of this game. No. He's not coming out of this game. And, yeah, we – they might score more this game than they've scored all week, all year. They they might score more in this game than they did in seven overtimes last year. Yeah, I mean that was seventy two. Yep. Yeah, I, I could see him putting seventy something up. Yep. No, I I, I don't don't get tricked into the A and M number. Just don't do it. Clemson plays at South Carolina on Saturday night. Clemson a twenty seven and a half point favorite. If that line was at twenty eight or twenty eight and a half, I might jump South Carolina. Because well, so what? What did you tell me? Like Muschamp, uh, uh, so so yeah, Muschamp. Muschamp was told after beating Georgia by, and this is a a friend of a guy who is uncles with a booster at South Carolina, and and they made it clear. No one expected them to beat Georgia, but when they did, he was informed. We do not care what happens the rest of the season. If you can beat Clemson and Georgia in the same year, you will get an extension. And 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 I and I thought this is an opportune time for you to tank the rest of the year and just watch Clemson film and get ready for them all year long. And uh, and I will tell you that that my buddy who's who's a fan and his uncle who's a booster were would have been totally fine with that. Yeah. Totally fine with that. And it looked like they were trying to win those other games, which you have to. You, your coach and the kids want to. They want to win all the games. They're still playing college football. That's something fans talk about, not players and coaches. But but he was kind of upset that you're trying, you're not looking great. I'd rather you not try and get ready for this game. Yeah, I don't know that they've got the horses to do it. I don't know that they're going to catch Clemson sleeping. But if he can hit him in the mouth, he'll be the first team all year to hit him in the mouth. I mean, aside from North Carolina. North Carolina didn't hit him in the mouth. I just think really. they got caught off guard. But nobody's played them physical yet. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a defense pressing that offense. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And then last but not least, of course, Oklahoma, a 13-point favorite in Bedlam against Oklahoma State. Obviously, Spencer Sanders is not there. Tylen Wallace is not there. That's kind of a problem. Other than the fact that the Oklahoma State quarterback last week didn't look bad. It was no. 22 out of 29. Like, they they just always find somebody to throw in there. I was just about to say, Gundy, Gundy makes all those guys. And I really think they got a shot There's here. There's too many points. And, uh, yes, 13 points on the road in this matchup. I understand that Oklahoma, in some years, has beaten the crap out of them. Gundy's, Oklahoma State only Gundy's lost by one. 
the only Last press year. conference today when talking about that team. Uh, what what did he say? It was uh, so they run the pistol. No, he said they're a, uh, a wishbone. They're a wishbone team yeah, they're disguised a, as a spread team. Yeah, he said they're a wishbone team. They just yeah. disguise it as a as a spread. Like Jalen Hurts has has run. I love the arrogance that he talked to. Oh yeah, he, he said, was like Jalen you know Hurts touched this the ball. I was up at I was up at two in the morning, and nobody in here was up working at two in the morning. I just yeah. I love that man. He's hilarious. He is. He's easy to not like if if you're a little thin skinned or whatever. If you like a little tough, brash, ballsy. Talk a little shit. He's not afraid to. No. And if he I, talks trash and then gets his butt whipped, hey, that's not going to stop him from talking trash. No, he's going to keep going. Yeah, he's just... I, I really, love it. I really, I really like Mike Gundy a lot. I love it. I thought it was great, and I, yeah. I think they got a shot to win the game. I do, too. I, I'm going to have money line on that. I'm going to have it. Yeah, I can believe it. It's going to pay out well. It's 13 points. What uh? What What is the, the money line? line? Give me a second. Let's see. Oklahoma... I can get plus 360, and plus I'll take three. that plus 360. That ain't bad. That ain't bad at all. All right, that is going to wrap up the college football previews for week number 14, Rivalry Week. Great, great week of football. How fantastic is that? Ah, From so Thanksgiving good. Day all the way through. Yeah. All of these podcast previews, etc., are all going up at the same time. They will all be out for Wednesday for everybody that's going to be traveling and whatnot. We hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving. Hopefully it is profitable if you are going to put some money on these. Uh, we can't wait to talk about them, of course. Be safe uh, traveling. Yes. Please. So uh, don't forget, go over to winningcureseverything.com. All of our videos, podcasts, picks, previews. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. Give us a like on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Leave a review and subscribe over on the podcast. All that wonderful stuff. All of that matters. We do appreciate you guys for doing it. We appreciate the support all the yeah. time. Go over to tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Tunicatravel.com is the place to find all the information on all six of their sports books. We will see you all again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.